Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to uncover something really interesting. Do you know what is that? We need to understand and uncover that what are those three mistakes that an English learner should never make. Okay, so if you really want to make English your life skill, if you really want to master at this language, okay, if you really want to excel at this language, you have to make sure that you never ever commit these three mistakes. Okay, so let's understand what are these three mistakes. The third mistake that I'll be talking about is the most important one. Okay, make sure you never do it in your English learning journey. Okay, so without a further ado, let's quickly begin. Let me quickly share my screen with you. And here we go. Okay, friends. So what are the three mistakes? Okay, what are the three mistakes that we aren't supposed to make as an English learner? I just want to increase the size of the picture. Okay, and here we go. What do you think? Which can, what is the first one? Okay, what is the mistake that you make? What do you feel? What is the hindrance in your lear English learning journey? The very first, the very first mistake that we all English learners, okay, tend to make is we try to translate directly from our mother tongue into English and which is nothing but a big blunder. Okay, so the first mistake is do not ever translate. Okay, do not even attempt to translate. Okay, so no matter whichever language you are talking, be it Hindi, be it Gujarati, be it Marathi. Okay, do not tend to directly translate from your native language to English. That's the biggest blunder. Why so? Why do you think we should you know, be aware about this direct translation. Why? The reason is very simple. Because every language has a different structure. Okay? Like in Hindi or in Marathi or in Gujarati, the structure is subject, object and verb. Okay? However, in English, the structure is subject, verb, object. Now, imagine... You're translating directly from an SOV structure to SVO structure. What is going to happen to your English? It's going to be a big blunder. Okay, it's going to be a big blunder. So let's not make that blunder. Okay, so before, you know, before you get that urge to translate, okay, first hold on and understand what is the structure of English and what is the structure of your native language? Is it aligned? If not, then do not ever, you know, commit this mistake of directly translating. Am I very clear? Because most of the English learners directly try to translate from their mother tongue to English. And then they worry that, oh, why is it that my English is not so fluent? Why is it that my English goes so wrong? Why am I so hesitant while talking? Because the sentence structures eventually that you will create, you know, as a byproduct of direct translation is going to be absolutely incorrect. Okay, so you're going to be in a, in a complete erroneous zone. Erroneous means you will in the wrong zone. Okay, and in the zone which has not many errors. So you have to make sure that you do not commit any errors in English. Okay, so before you actually want to get fluent in English, your first primary goal should be to talk and write error-free English. Okay, error-free English. And how can you go error-free? The first thing is understanding the language structure. Okay, so try to understand the language structure of English. Okay, only then, only then think of translating. Okay, otherwise translation is going to be your biggest blunder. Okay, with this brings me to the second mistake. You know, what's that second mistake? While we learn English, we tend to overemphasize 
okay we try, tend to over emphasize on any one area of english like we tend to only focus on vocabulary or we just focus on grammar and then we give up that oh my grammar is weak my grammar is not that great i cannot even memorize few rules how will i manage to speak you know fluent english right or we are just listening or we are just reading okay or we or most importantly we are just watching youtube videos youtube videos my friends will only give you information information okay now unless you translate that information into your language unless that it, unless you infuse that into your language you will not see any miracle you will not see any impact happening in your language so the first thing is do not over emphasize on any one area of english like vocabulary grammar or anything okay uh, you will have to have a holistic learning framework okay friends and holistic learning framework will 100% okay will 100% have a direct impact a direct positive impact on your spoken as well as your written english it will make sure that your english quotient is elevated okay so you have to make sure now what is this hol holistic learning framework that i'm talking about the very first thing that you need to focus upon as english learner as an english learner is awareness okay so first get a you know develop your awareness about the standard language structure okay so understand what is the language structure of english what is it that comprises english language so what is it that comprises english language it is the eight parts of speech if you do not know what are these eight parts of speech friends please make sure that you google it uh, uncover it right away and then watch this video okay so what are these eight parts of speech like noun pronoun adverb verb you know adjective etc all these are eight parts of speech now english language is made up of these eight parts of speech okay so just knowing what is a noun or what are the types of nouns is not going to have any impact on your spoken or your written english just by knowing what is an adjective and what are the types of adjective is not going to have any any effect on your english what is going to have an impact on your english the day when you uncover that how are you supposed to actually use these eight parts of speech correctly in your sentence structure is the day when you level up is the day when you actually hit the standard language structure are we getting it friends so like for example if i say myself what is myself is it a pronoun of course it is which type of pronoun it's a reflexive pronoun so just by knowing that myself is a pronoun and a reflexive pronoun will this have any impact on our english no but what is important is how should i be using this pronoun correctly in my sentence structures can i say myself shivangi can i say that i certainly can't say that why because of myself is a reflexive pronoun and a reflexive pronoun can never be used as a subject of the sentence see okay so that's what that's what i'm saying that your first objective is to be you know in an error free english zone okay so before you develop that quest ki oh i want to sound very fluent i want to sound very fluent first make sure that you eliminate all these errors from your language the day when you eliminate your errors fluency is going to be the by product fluency will automatically follow okay but still the time you have these errors in your english till the time these concepts are not clear what is going to happen you will always have hesitation while talking while reading or while creating sentences you will have all these grammatical dilemmas oh what should i write should i write speak with should i write speak to what is it that i should write i am at airport i am in airport what is it that i should say all this grammatical confusion is 
you know, be, re, the reason of all this is basically why? Because your awareness of standard language structure is very poor. Okay. So while you are preparing for your English, do not just overemphasize on one area of English. Have a holistic framework. Okay. And when I say holistic framework, the very first thing is awareness about the standard English language structure. Know what, how should you apply grammar? Okay, so what is important is applied aspects of grammar. Okay, not just grammar. What you need is applied aspects of grammar. So not just knowing what are these eight parts of speech, not, not just knowing what are the types, not just knowing how to convert present tense to past tense or a past perfect tense. No, but what are the situations in which I'm going to use these tense? That is exactly what is going to help me in my English journey. Okay, and then making sure that you add a new word daily to your vocab to your vocabulary. Now, even when you are learning a new word, you need to understand that every word has a certain part of speech. Like beautiful. What part of speech is beautiful? It's an adjective. So you will use the adjective accordingly in your sentence structures. Now, unless you know that beautiful is an adjective, Okay, it is difficult that you will create a right sentence out of this word beautiful. Or for example, if I say the word voracious. Now, what is voracious? Voracious, you need to understand what part of speech voracious is. Okay, what is the part of speech of this word? Okay, so if you know that it's an adjective, you can place it before the noun and create the right sentence structure. You can say, oh, she's a voracious reader. She is an avid reader. So now avid, voracious, they are adjectives. And that is why I'm placing it before a noun. That's, a, that's the reader. Okay. Emancipate. What word is this? Emancipate is basically to, you know, free someone from bondages. Now it is a verb. So how will I use the verb in the sentence structures? So make sure that you first know what is the standard language structure in that you are completely aware about all the eight parts of speech and how are you supposed to use what are the functions one function of that eight parts of speech that's the most important part okay that's the thing that is going to have a positive impact and the third the most important mistake that we do that we learn a lot but we fail to apply okay but we fail to apply in our language there is absence of usage of the concepts that we learn in practice Okay, so we are not applying in what we are learning in practice. Now, how are you supposed to overcome this mistake? Okay, firstly, firstly, start whenever you are learning, start using it in your WhatsApp chats. Okay, the best thing is start using it in your WhatsApp chats. Second is use it in your emails. Use it in your colloquials. Colloquials is basically your old spoken English in your colloquials with your friends, with your family, with your colleagues. Okay, do that. Okay, so unless you apply things, whatever you learn, unless you apply those things, things are going to be very difficult. Okay, things are going to be very difficult. So there will, you know, the day you start applying your concepts is the day when you start making progress in English, my friends. This is exactly how it works. And the day you start applying things is the day when you will level up, level up, level up and keep leveling up. So every day you have to make sure that you level up a bit. Now, Whatever I spoke about in this video, okay, the most important part is being aware about the standard language structure, being aware about the applied aspects of grammar, okay, trying to infuse new words, you know, daily in your day-to-day -day English, trying to infuse little idioms, you know, a little bit of idiomatic expressions in your English, trying to include phrasal verbs in your English. Now, all this, when you work on all this together, when you apply all this together in your English, that's the day when you start elevating your English quotient. And if this is if this is something that really interests you as to how, what is it that you should know about the standard language structure, if you're really keen of learning what is the standard language structure, how are you supposed to apply it in your daily English, 
Okay, how are you supposed to elevate your English quotient by following this holistic framework? You can join my community. I welcome you to my community, English Life Skill Hub. Okay, I like, regularly keep conducting master free master classes. So you can check the description wherein the link for master class is given. You can join the master class. You can get in touch with me, and it's in our community where we nail where we actually nail every aspect of what I have spoken, okay, in this video. And the day you keep touching these aspects, you keep applying these aspects, is the day when you will see the graph of your English learning goes up, okay? It will certainly go up, okay, friends? So if this interests you, okay, you can certainly get in touch with me and make sure that in your English journey, you do not make such mistakes, okay? So with this, I would like to end my video. If you have any queries, any concerns, you can certainly get in touch with me. Okay, friends, thank you so much and goodbye. Have a nice day.